So let's really break down Yamamoto. What can Dodger fans and Major League Baseball fans expect to see his first year here in the U.S.? Biggest in contract and financial numbers, not biggest in size and stature. That is what we can expect from Yamamoto. All right. He is about five foot nine, 176 pounds. Here's a photo of him next to you, Darvish, and Shohei Otani. He is a small, he's a small guy. Yeah. Um, Good things come in small packages. Yes. However, he does not pitch like a small individual. Think, think Pedro Martinez when we're talking Yamamoto. Small guy, but he's going to throw fuego. He's going to be mid to upper 90s. Um, and in NPB, these numbers are tough to match. 70 and 29, Whew. a 182 ERA, and 922 strikeouts. Those are his career numbers in Japan pitching. That's crazy. This guy's won, this guy won three straight pitching triple crowns, three straight Sawamura Awards, which is the Cy Young Award over in Japan, three straight MVPs as a pitcher. The first since Ichiro to do that. First player over there to go to go back to back since Ichiro. So the numbers, the awards, the accolades, they're unmatched. I mean, seriously, these are ridiculous. So you're getting a pitcher that knows how to win, knows how to dominate. But here's what he's going to bring. Those awards don't come over with you. I mean, they, you could carry him over, but that those <laughs> awards mean nothing in terms of the success you're going to have in Major League Baseball. Yeah. So how does it translate, right? Because we, we've seen the transition period from Shohei Otani from the MPB to Major League Baseball. Hopefully it helps having Otani on his team now with that transition. Yeah. But how do you see it? How do you see it translating for Yamamoto? Well, what does translate, Alex, yeah. is a fastball that's about 95 and 99 miles an hour. Okay. Nasty, good movement. Looks like it looks like it rises, which is the Ooh. sign of a good fastball. Uh, if you're watching the show and not just listening you can see uh you can see it in the wall right now we're going to break down some of his pitches but this is fastball sits 95 can get up to up close to 100 about 99 we saw him blowing balls by guys in the world baseball classic really good fastball 95 to 99 plays mm. anywhere curveball his curveball is unbelievable when you think yoshinobu yamamoto's curveball Think a right-handed Clayton Kershaw curveball. That's what it is. It is one of the prettiest curveballs there is, and we saw it a lot in the World Baseball Classic. He throws it all the time. But seriously, that's the comparison for this curveball. Clayton Kershaw, left-handed, known for his beautiful curveball. Yamamoto, right-handed, very, very similar pitch, in my opinion, to Clayton Kershaw. And then there's his splitter. Mm. When it comes to his splitter, which again, if you're just watching, you can see uh, you can see all of this in the in the uh, wall right now. Splitter, think Shohei Otani, uh, Kodai Senga, Hideo Nomo. I feel like a lot of pitchers that come over from NPB come over with a nasty splitter. That's almost a staple pitch for dominant Japanese pitchers. Is a dominant splitter. And you'd be hard-pressed to find one better than Yamamoto's. That's how good it is. So those are his three main pitches. Fastball, yeah. curveball, splitter. He does have others. He has a slider. He has a cutter. But he throws those, those about less than 8% of the time there. So uh, that's what we can expect. A lot of awards, a lot of accolades coming over from Japan. But his stuff will play here, Alex. I promise you it will play. So obviously everything we just went through, he dominated. Yamamoto dominated the MPB at under a two ERA the last three seasons. So this is the big question because the Dodgers paid him the biggest contract, the biggest pitching contract in major league history. Is he going to be their ace on opening day or do you move him to that number two spot until he kind of adjusts and gets settled? How, how do you see this playing out? So this becomes an, an interesting question, I think, because if, if all were normal and everything was, and everybody was coming in healthy um, I would say that Walker Bueller has shown that he deserves to be the ace of the staff, mm. but he's coming off of a big injury. There's a lot of unknown yeah. there. He didn't, you know, he wasn't a, a part of the team last year. So I, I do feel like with that unknown from Walker Bueller, obviously he's going to be a big part of that rotation and, and, uh, spring training will show us a lot, but yeah. if I'm the Dodgers, 
Opening day, I throw out our new prize possession. 12 years, $325 million. I don't hesitate to throw Yamamoto out there on opening day. I, mean, I really don't. I mean, can you imagine, like, the marketing of having Yamamoto and Otani uh, opening day, Dodgers, both on the, like, lineup card? Like, it would be insane. But you got to remember, it took Shohei Otani the entire spring training to get the feel for his pitches, get comfortable with the mound and the ball. So it's... Well, that's one, that's one thing I want to talk about. I, I do want to talk about that, Alex, okay. because I, I, one, I don't think enough people think about the transition from NPB to Major League Baseball for pitchers. There's a, lot that, um, there's a lot that goes into it. The mound is different. The baseball itself yeah. is different. So it is a big talking point, and I really wanted to look into some numbers and dive into comparisons of some other pitchers that have come over from Japan to the U.S., and how they did in their first year here, because I, I'm interested. How does it translate, and do you have success in that very first year here? So yeah. we put uh, about three pitchers together, first up being Hideo Nomo. Uh, here is, and, and again, this is last year in NPB compared to their first year in Major League Baseball. The ones that jump out to me for Hideo Nomo, his last year in Japan, a 3.63 ERA. Came over his first year in Major League Baseball, a 2.54 ERA. In about 80 more innings, and he struck out 236 guys in his first year in Major League Baseball. So Hideo Nomo came over and actually had a far better yeah. year in his first year in Major League Baseball than he did in his last year in Japan. Next up, we'll talk Masahiro Tanaka. Now, this one is uh, tough to match your last year in Japan. He yeah. went a whopping 24 Undefeated. and 0, my yeah. friends, in his last year in MPB. 24 and 0 with a 1.27 ERA and 212 innings. Now, compare that to his first year in Major League Baseball with the New York Yankees. He went 13 and 5 with a 2.77 ERA. Alex, you will take that any day oh, of yeah. the week. Now, there's not a ton of innings there. His last, his last year in uh, MPB threw 212 innings. First year in Major League Baseball, 136 innings, but he did strike out 141 guys. So more than one strikeout per uh, inning pitched, which is really good. So come over, not as dominant for Tanaka, but shows signs of, wow, this guy can be really good. Yeah. Uh, next up, we'll talk Kodai Singa, the recent one, the one we just saw. Yeah. And this is a big one for me. And this is actually a big oh. reason why I think Yamamoto was, okay. um, was given $325 million. I think the most recent example, Kodai mm -hmm. Singa, uh, I think Kodai Singa came over and dominated. And yeah. I think that is uh, that eases people's mind a lot with the current state of pitchers in Japan coming over. His last year in NPB, he went 11-6 and six with a 2.25 ERA. Struck out 159 guys in 148 innings. First year in Major League Baseball with the New York Mets. 12 and 7, a 298 ERA, so under a three ERA. And in 166 and a third innings, he struck out 202 guys. Was up there in the rookie of the year voting, got some Cy Young votes. Yeah. Kodai Singa dominated. So I think that translate uh trans translation or transition period yeah. for Japanese pitchers coming over. Is narrowing. Um, I do. Yeah. I really do think it's narrowing, and I think okay. a lot of pitchers are proving, look, we have the stuff to do it, and that stuff translates. And 95 to 99 with a Clayton Kershaw right-handed curveball and a nasty splitter, that plays anywhere. And to everyone saying, why would the Dodgers give $325 million to a guy that has never thrown a single pitch in Major League Baseball, it's because... Those MVP awards, those Sawamura awards, those Triple Crown awards, they don't translate. But that fastball, that curveball, and that splitter does. And we know over 100-plus years of Major League Baseball what gets hitters out, and it's those pitches. He's going to dominate. Calling it. Opening day, he's the ace. I think he starts opening yeah. day. I think Yamamoto... The more you're talking me through it and the comparisons and, and, and just, again, like how big that moment would be, I'm with you. I think I think I'm with you. Yeah, I, I think they um I think they go that direction. Okay. I really do. I think that would be awesome to see. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um yeah, so I think the Dodgers actually open up in overseas. They're in 
Korea. I so. forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, so then that might change it, like everything. That could, yeah. yeah could, that, who, that'll who change knows everything. What could but okay. uh, I think it'd be really cool. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3 0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213 537 9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.